compact monopole masks are ubiquitous in both the urban and rural street scene due to their compact size and visually inobtrusive design meaning they can be placed in areas either to provide the sort of general coverage in the area or to provide capacity coverage or also potentially infill coverage in certain areas. Now they come in a whole load of different shapes and sizes because of course different providers of the different mobile operators and also different manufacturers of the monopoles as time goes on. But I'm going to generally fo I'm going to focus on the monopoles that you are likely to see around the place today and sort of what they broadcast, who made them, and also the cabinets that provide the actual sort of signal that then gets fed out of the actual pole and antennas. So to start off with, I'm going to talk about the monopoles that E and 3 use to provide their service. Now these typically come in two different varieties, a slimline single input sort of version and then the newer ones that you see which feature double input panels to support the greater range of services. So to start off with the single input this really sort of thin monopoles. So because these only have single input high band panels, because E and 3 use high, band, high frequencies for most of their services, the upper shrouds and some antenna area of the mast can be very small. And in this case, for example, the actual antenna section is no well, larger in diameter than the actual supporting pole. It's just the joint, which obviously has to wrap around both the sort of antenna support and the, the actual mast itself which obviously has to be thicker to do that. Then we've got the Hutchinson replica telegraph pole, which as its name suggests looks rather like a replica telegraph pole, except of course it doesn't have telephone wires spanning across it, and also some of them have got microwave links, which is quite a giveaway. And then there, are, there is the sort of lollipop style ones, which have this kind of lollipop white shroud, and these can come in the two different varieties, so these can be single input or dual input depending on the diameter of the shroud. So in this case the shroud isn't that much larger than the actual pole below, which indicates it's single input. And then finally we have this design here which has a microwave link below it, which again is fairly common. So these are the main types of being 3 single input monopoles you'll see around the place. These are gradually being removed and being replaced with monopoles that can support double input panels required to run EE, 2G, 3G, 4G and then 3's 3G but also 3, 4G which then requires that second input. So to fit the double input panels which are pretty much literally twice as wide as single input ones you need a larger shroud and the some of the, that rules out some of these kind of monopole designs. So the replica telegraph poles can't take double input panels, so they generally get replaced with the thick lollipop. In fact, all of these single input panels that I've just mentioned generally all get replaced with an Alifabs monopole with the sort of lollipop top section on it which is usually white but the actual shroud can come in different colours to sort of match nearby surroundings so I've seen loads of, one, loads of them which are actually dark green in colour so they match with obviously the foliage and they contain yeah, dual input panels so that you can support the, all the core technologies and frequencies for EE and 3. So in the pictures I show one which has which is white coloured and has a pair of microwave links below it and then the other one is black in colour. I don't know why they chose a black one, but they did. So that's really the sort of modern, and perhaps not so modern, but still in use very commonly E and 3 monopole designs. So next up is to look at the cabinets that feed them. And generally E and 3 use very similar cabinets from site to site, which makes it very easy to recognise, especially modern masts. So EE use a BTS 3900 made by Huawei for their 2G, 4G, because it's basically an 1800 MHz cabinet, so that then produces yeah, their, their 4G and 2G services at the mast. 
Then there's usually a, another reasonably large cabinet which would have carried the 2G and 3G before, but now only carries the 3G. And then when 3 decide to use a second input in the new monopole, which actually normally happens, very, which usually happens very quickly because the new monopole gets rigged and then they stick the 4G on it because that's obviously why the new monopole got rigged in the first place. A new cabinet appears for their 4G services, which is usually an Alifabs model, an Alifabs Pagona. So these are typically white in colour and they are quite recognisable in terms of size and shape as well. Although just the thing that I've just remembered, the Huawei BTS 3900As, which EE used for their 1800MHz 2G and 4G, they can come in different colours but also different stacking arrangements. So they can be both horizontally stacked and vertically stacked as you can see in the picture. So the left green one is horizontally stacked, so the two sort of halves are side by side. And then in the white one, they are the two sort of halves are on top of each other. And again, this is designed to try and reduce street clutter and thereby help planning applications go through. So next up, it's time to look at Vodafone and O2 monopoles, which are typically sort of deployed under the Cornerstone Infrastructure Limited sort of name. Because of course, O2 and Vodafone share quite a lot of network assets at the moment in most of the UK. So once again, these are actually quite recognisable as well, and both recognisable in terms of the sort of masks within Cornerstone, and also the compared to E and Three's masks because the Vodafone O2 Cornerstone masks are significantly larger. The shrouds have a large diameter and they're taller in order to fit the panels to then support the lower frequencies that Vodafone O2's core networks run off. So to start off with, the most common type that I see is a Hutchinson Jupiter single stack. And once again, these are made by Hutchinson Engineering in the UK, which is quite nice. And often they're white coloured, but again, I see the sort of monopole and shroud in other colours to suit the area. So I've seen a sort of brownie orange one, and also a black coloured one as well, although I'm sure there are other variants available. So these typically have triple input panels on them. So you have 800, 900, and 2100 for the inputs to then support the 2G, 3G, 4G, 4O2, and Vodafone. However, because they can support triple input panels, that can actually mean they're occasionally used for E3 because E3, don't forget, have an 800 MHz spectrum asset to complement their high band 1800 and 2100 frequencies. So in a few cases, I have actually seen the replica telegraph monofiles being replaced with a Jupiter so that then E3 can then use 800 megahertz 4G in that area to provide the sort of large coverage alongside that 1800 megahertz for sort of capacity and then the usual 1800 and 2100 for 3G. But realistically, if you see a Jupiter, Hutchinson and Jupiter monopole, it's almost certain to be Vodafone and O2. But once again, if you look at the cabinets below the monopole or very near the monopole, they are the absolute giveaway. But I'll go on to them later after I've covered the monopoles themselves. So next up, the Hutchinson Jupiter dual stack monopole. These were fitted kind of at the beginning of the 4G rollout, whereas now they've kind of moved more towards the single stack ones, partly because the single stack ones are a little bit smaller and aren't, the, you know, the shrouds aren't quite so tall. And the reason for that is that the dual stack monopoles have two stacks of antenna panels on them. So you've got a set of panels on top and a set of panels below, and you can see that by the sort of midline on the shroud section. And the reason for this, well, I'm not completely sure why they did it that way, but it meant that the two operators could have certain sort of dedicated antennas for themselves. So the top panel would often be used for 920-100 megahertz for the first operator, and then 800 megahertz 4G for both, and then the panel below would be 920-100 megahertz for the second operator. So while the two operators would be sharing 4G from the top panel, they would have their own dedicated 2G, 3G, if you like. And also, the other way it can be used is for future expansion purposes. So you can say use the top panel for 800, 900, 20, 100 megahertz for 4G, 2G, and 3G. But then you have panels below that, which could then say be used for 1800 megahertz or 
2600 mega or both to provide future capacity which is definitely advantageous but once again it, it is a very substantial top section it's a very substantial shroud which is quite noticeable I have to say so now on to some other types so there's in a lot of places, well, not so much so anymore, but there are legacy Vodafone O2 2100 megahertz only masts, which have since either had new monopoles fitted nearby for both operators, or 2100 megahertz masts have just been completely removed because the added sort of range from 900 megahertz 3G and 800 megahertz 4G from surrounding masts is more than enough to cover the area that that 2100 megahertz infill mast covered before. And obviously, because these are 2100 megahertz, the actual shroud and the antenna panels themselves are very small. So, yeah, the top section is very small, but you won't see that many of those anymore because, like I said, they're being quite rapidly decommissioned and removed to be replaced with the Hutchinson Jupiter monopoles that then can carry the 800, 900, 2100 as well. Next up, um, Hutchinson Pandora monopoles, which actually semi contradicts what I just said. These are usually 2100 MHz 3G only, but they are used in some urban areas because having a good three, having good 3G capacity is still important because 3G is still used for calls on the vast majority of networks and the vast majority of devices, and that is how it will stay for a long time. And also, just another thing to note: not everyone has ultra modern devices but also these Pandora monopoles have reasonably large diameter shrouds on them and from what I can gather that's because they can take slightly larger high band panels but also instead of just carrying 2100 megahertz 3G these ones are sometimes specified for also potentially carrying 4G 1800 in the future because of course, Vodafone and O2, they have 5.8 MHz of 1800 MHz spectrum, which is paired, which is currently generally used for 2G in places, but it can be refarmed 4G. They are allowed to refarming, and certainly in London areas, O2 is already using 1800 MHz for 4G capacity in a sort of LTE, a sort of carrier aggregation setup. So next up is another 2100 MHz only monopole, except this one's dual stack, and so each operator have basically their own panels, one on top of the other, and this monopole is very slimline, in fact it's actually quite hard to tell which section is the panels and which is the support post, because once again the 2100 MHz panels are very small, you know the wavelength is very small, so that means the panels can be small and therefore the diameter of the pole can be small. And just due to the 4G and the way that device reselection works, the actual 3G performance around these monopoles is usually superb because the 2100 MHz is only usually sort of being used for calls and maybe some legacy devices. The speeds you can get can be pretty much near the theoretical maximum. So, you know, I'm talking 30 megabit per second plus, which is very, very nice. Just on take, just on the second take of this video, I've just thought about those 2100 megahertz new monopoles, the Hutchinson Pandora and the dual stack one, they were actually fitted in areas where there'd been a bit of planning sort of objection in the past. So I think they were fitted to try and get a monopole there, some more capacity and some more coverage with the potential expansion of a 4G1800, rather than having nothing, e.g. having a fully blown Hutchinson Jupiter, for example, objected. However, Previously in this video, I stated that the Hutchinson Jupiter replica telegraph poles were sort of generally being replaced by E3 with the new Alifabs, Lollipop, Dual Olympus, White Shrouded monopoles. However, Vodafone O2 have a sort of wraparound that will clamp onto the top of that monopole and then fit new antennas pretty much. And this is what it looks like. So you can see here, you have the normal Hutchinson Jupiter sort of replica telegraph pole style. And then on top of that, you have a separate sort of GRP enclosure, which then sort of wraps around and clamps on the bottom of the supporting fake pole. The main difference with these ones, or this one, is that it doesn't have the sort of climbing 
uh, the climbing mount so that the engineer with a telegraph pole would use to climb up the pole, which the Hutchinson Jupiter replica telegraph pole that I showed in the case of the E3 ones did have. So these Vodafone for no two ones don't seem, certainly the ones I've seen, don't seem to have the sort of climbing uh, rungs on them. They just sort of a brown, sort of a brown fake wooden pole with then the wrap around on top. Now this mast was doing 800 and 900 megahertz, so 800 megahertz, 4G, 900, 2G, 3G. But as far as I know, they can actually run 2100 megahertz out of them. Because I think, I haven't found any proof this yet, but I suspect they have dual input panels in them. So the, the setup of that one would have been 800 megahertz in one input and then 900 megahertz in the other, but potentially they could get a panel which has got a low input and a high input, stick 2100 megahertz in the high input and then combine 800 and 900 into the low input. However, they don't seem to have done that in this example, but I found another one of the monopoles which was in a more urban location, but the actual sh where the actual travel was much, much higher up on the actual pole where I suspect that one did actually have 2100 megahertz on it, so maybe they are using the sort of combined 800, 900 and 2100 like I've just said. And I guess finally we can look at one of the relics of the monopole world. So this is an old 900 megahertz monopole, which generally used by Vodafone O2 for 2G only, so generally when people see them it's a bit like, oh dear. Um, but these use omnidirectional antennas in them, whereas all the monopoles I've said so far, despite being round, all have three antennas in them. So one, so pointing sort of in the three directions, if you like, so kind of like, duh, 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 to like, like pretty much how a normal sort of macro cell on a tower would be set up. Set up. Vodafone do also have another type of legacy monopole, which I sometimes see broadcasting just basic 2100 MHz HSDPA and sometimes 900 MHz GPRS or 2G, which is just something to be aware of. So I guess finally it's time to look at the cabinets that Vodafone know to use. And like the EE uh, Huawei BCS3900A, and the Hutch and the Alifabs and like the Alifabs Pagona cabinet, these are very recognisable. So the main cabinets that are used are made by Alifabs once more, and these are typically RBS 6102s. Quite big cabinets, but they've got good ventilation and they've got a huge amount of space inside for the actual radio broadcasting units. And these are used on pretty much every modern Vodafone O2 monopole that I come across. In varying amounts though, some monopoles have only one cabinet, so say that 2100MHz dual stack monopole, it only has one RBS6102 in front of it, whereas usually the big uh, Hutchinson Jupiter monopoles with 800, 900, 2100 usually have two of them, or potentially even three of them. Other cabinets that you tend to see are telephonic uh, Canon ones. So these are sort of cabinets that were used, say, with the previous monopole that was fitted in that location. And also there are Alifabs meter cabinets, which are very, very common indeed as well. Besides that, there are just the Alifabs Spitfire cabinets. So all in all, what you can probably guess from work out from this is that Vodafone know to love their Alifabs cabinets. In fact, three quite like their Alifabs cabinets as well. So if you see, I mean, like I said though, the majority of the Vodafone OT masters that I come across use the RBS It's 102 Alifabs cabinets, which are very recognizable, quite large. And they have quite a nice sort of lock thing in the middle as well, and the sort of vents on top. They look a bit like industrial commercial kitchen fridges, actually. Just having thought about it, there are there is another kind of cabinet that you will sometimes see. So this one is was present at that altered Vodafone 2100 megahertz monopole. 
But I've also seen them at some old EN3 sites, so by the looks of it, it probably does like 2100 MHz and potentially 1800 as well. Quite large inside, quite good ventilation, so there's no reason why it couldn't carry lots of different sort of services and radios inside it. But they're generally replaced now, and the ones that do exist on sort of decommissioned Mars do look a little bit defunct. So finally, while I said that the all these monopoles have box standards of three panels in them, thought it might be a good opportunity to perhaps look at some examples where the shroud has not been on the monopole for whatever reason, so you sort of upgrade work or so on. And you can see that, like in this case, this is a legacy single input E slash 3 monopole, and you can see that there are three small panels sort of on the actual sort of mast pole itself, and that's like all that was in those old E and 3 monopoles, three small panels for carrying the 1800 and 2100MHz signal. And then with, I mean, with the Vodafone No 2 panels, like I said, they would use, they have the lower band frequencies, so the panels are quite a bit larger, so like this monopole from Street View, which had lost part of its shroud, but has since been upgraded, I think. Um, you can see that, once again, there are three panels in it, but in this case they're triple input panels, they've got six cables going into them. But, yeah, I mean, people expect that the actual monopole shrouds themselves have got sort of almost fairy dust in them or some weird concoction of panels and stuff, but they just use bog standard panels that you'd find on a tower or building or any other sort of mast structure. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have a variety of, sort of single page spotters guides to working out what a mast is. I've also got a website dedicated to sort of phone mast pictures and explaining it and also a YouTube playlist for what learning about mobile phone masts and radio technology, all of which will be linked below. So I hope you've enjoyed this rather long video and I'll see you on the next one.